Hey guys, my name is Sarah. I'm a healthcare traveler and I live full time in my Airstream. I've been in Washington for two months now. I am absolutely blown away by this state and here's what I've done so far. I feel so lucky to have gotten a contract in such a beautiful state at the perfect time of the year because honestly you cannot be a summer in the Pacific Northwest. Washington has so much to offer. There's a little bit of everything here. I'm in a great location just west of the Cascade Mountain Range. I can hop over to the mountains or to the coast. I'm close to Canada. There's islands here. I can even go to a rainforest. There's so much to do here, it's insane. It's pretty much an outdoor lover's paradise. I could seriously spend a lifetime here and never get bored, if only the sun stayed out for the entire year. <laughs> as far as my contract, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I took a variable shift, which I will never do again. I am all over the place, days, evenings, nights. It's super hard to coordinate and make plans, but I've still gotten out as much as I possibly could. I won't be extending this contract, but I am gonna hang out in the area for a little bit once I'm done. I was very fortunate to get a spot at an RV park during this time of the year. Most of the RV parks I called would laugh in my ear and tell me there was zero availability during this time of the year even for healthcare travelers. There was one park that I called that had just had a cancellation, so they were able to squeeze me in. I'm extremely thankful for that because if it weren't for that RV spot, I probably wouldn't have accepted my contract or come up here at all. That was my first time living in an RV park. It wasn't a bad experience by any means, it was just very ugly. I didn't enjoy looking out my window and seeing nothing but other RVs every day. I did some networking and found someone that's letting me stay on their personal property now. It's really amazing here because I have privacy, it's beautiful, there's chickens, there's miniature horses, the neighbors have goats, and I can see Mount Rainier right from the top of my street. The first place I ventured out to when I got to Washington was the coast. I went to Westport Beach to watch my new friends surf, and somehow I got very easily convinced to try surfing myself. Let's just say it didn't go very well, but I tried. I'm definitely not cut out for surfing, but I got to try something new, and I got some cool shots with my friend's board. <laughs> I've also spent some time on the coast up in the Olympic Peninsula area. I got to take my first ferry from Seattle and lived out all of my Grey's Anatomy dreams. My friend and I drove through Port Angeles by Lake Crescent and down to Forks, which is supposedly where Twilight was filmed, and then spent the day on La Push Beach. I expected it to be super foggy and gloomy out there, but when I got there, the sun was shining. It was an absolutely beautiful day. I even took a nap on the beach and got totally sunburned. The Olympic Peninsula is a beautiful area. After camping by the coast for the night, we went to the national park and trailblazed through the Ho rainforest until we found the Ho River. Our dogs got to run around and once again, it was a beautiful day with perfect weather. I also went on a camping trip with some other travelers on the Olympic Peninsula. My friend who's a travel nurse rented out an entire campground right next to Lake Crescent. There was probably around 30 travelers at this meetup and we had a great time. The next day, a few of us decided to conquer the Storm King hike. It's a mountain that has a beautiful view of Lake Crescent from the summit. I will say it's a pretty intense hike. It's over 2,000 feet of elevation gain over two miles, so you're basically going straight up. Once you get to the end of the maintained trail, you have to do like a rock scramble to get to the summit. Hikers have actually installed ropes on the trees to help you get up because it's so steep. There's a couple other national parks in Washington that I'm within driving distance of. I got to spend a day in North Cascades National Park. 
I did a whitewater rafting trip with some other travelers down the Skagit River. It was a great first rafting trip because the Skagit River has a few rough rapids, but most of the way it's pretty calm. Even though it was in the 90s, the water was freezing, so we didn't even feel hot at all. Our rafting guides were super fun and entertaining. They are a startup business, so if you want to support them by booking a rafting trip with them, I will put their information in the description below. After the rafting trip, we drove about 20 minutes east to Diablo Lake. I have never seen a lake that color in my entire life. North Cascades is one of the least visited national parks, and I have no idea why because it's gorgeous. There's some amazing hiking in that park and great camping as well, so I definitely have to go back. The national park that I'm closest to is Mount Rainier. Apparently, it's the tallest volcanic peak in the contiguous United States. It's also one of the most dangerous. There's actually a ton of volcano evacuation route signs where I live, but it's so gorgeous and I absolutely love getting to see it on my drive home every day. Hey, at least my home is on wheels if it ever erupts. The first trail I did there was to Comet Falls, which is in the Paradise area. It brings you to a 300 foot waterfall. Unfortunately, there aren't any mountain views from this trail, but you can drive just up the road and there's a bunch of lookout spots where you can see the mountain. The other hike I've done there is in the Sunrise area where you get a completely different view of the mountain. I did the Fremont Lookout Trail, which is about five miles and around a thousand feet of elevation gain. Once you get to the lookout, you have 360 degree views. That's also the closest I've ever been to Mount Rainier, and it almost doesn't even feel real when you're looking at it in person. During my time here, I haven't been able to resist exploring the city of Seattle. I went there on one of my first days here to go watch the 4th of July fireworks show. I walked to the Space Needle right after and I had just missed the cutoff to go up. But honestly, everything happens for a reason because the best time to go up there is during sunset. That way, you still have the daylight to see all of the mountains in the distance. You get to watch a beautiful sunset and then you get to soak in all the beautiful city lights. It's an absolute must-do tourist attraction if you're ever in Seattle. I've also been to Golden Gardens in Seattle where I attended another traveler meetup. I got to go paddle boarding, make some new friends, and see a gorgeous sunset. If any of you are wondering where I'm finding all these meetups, it's through the MedVenture app. And if you're a healthcare traveler, you definitely need to check it out because I've met a ton of amazing people through it. I've also gotten to explore Tacoma a little bit and attended a beer festival with some friends. Then my friend and I ventured over to McMenamins. McMenamins. It's a seven story building that's over a hundred years old. They renovated it recently and each floor has a different theme. There's bars, restaurants, hotel rooms, a speakeasy, and even a concert venue. We kept ourselves occupied pretty much all night, and I got sung happy birthday in several different languages. There was even one with an Elvis impression. <laughs> so that's pretty much everything I've done in Washington so far. I would have done a lot more if I wasn't working this crazy variable schedule. There's honestly so much more that I want to do and recommendations are totally welcome, but my summer clock is ticking. I am gonna stick around for the fall. I've heard it's beautiful during that time, and I think that's a better time to do some of the more intense hikes. I am going up to Canada for the first time this weekend, and then I'm gonna do some camping on the San Juan Islands, so maybe there will be videos on that. If you guys have any suggestions of what I should do in my last couple months here, please drop a comment. Thank you guys for watching this video and joining me on this amazing journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.